edition of the Diamonds Like Toys panel. Thank you guys so much for uh, coming. I realize that you had many ways to spend the last couple hours with the con, and uh, food be here is great, so thank you. Uh, I have a star-studded panel uh, here with me today. Uh, to my left is uh, Mr. Eli Livingston, uh, a sculptor extraordinaire. Uh, you may be familiar with his work on our Aliens line, as well as anything Cthulhu-related, uh, as well as The Walking Dead. So uh, uh, please, uh, uh, Hi. Think, start thinking of amazing questions for him because he's a very interesting dude. Uh, to his left is Adam Van Wickler, who's not particularly interesting, but he works for General Giant. Um, what would, what they would, haven't fired me. They have, they have not. They have not. Uh, what is your title there? Uh, I'm Director of Creative Services, which is a fancy way of saying I'm not talented enough to do the stuff I tell people what to do. <laughs> yes. So uh, he, he, well, he's our sort of go between uh, with uh, between things like toys and the actual sculptors who work on this stuff. Middleman. Middleman. He's a, he's a fixer. He's a fixer. Uh, to his left, we have Mr. Jason Wires, a painter extraordinaire who works on a uh, very great many of our prototypes that we uh, show at the panel at the booth and also in the catalog and online. So uh, before you get to see the actual final product, uh, his paints are the guides for the uh, factories in China to produce the uh, paints for the and to his left, uh, Mr. Chuck Tresera, the president of Diamond Select Toys, uh, president for, uh, you've been the president for how many years now? A while, it's been a while, uh, five, at least five. It's gotta be at least five, but it's, uh, it's probably far more than that. How many right. elections? <laughs> it's a dictatorship. There are elections. But, uh, they would definitely vote me out of the door. In addition to being president and uh, paying all of our uh, Checks. Uh, he is um, also the product manager in a great many of the lines that uh, we put out at Diamonds Like Toys. So uh, uh, let's get started. I, I'll, I will ask for a round of applause for these four very talented and uh, all in one line. So uh, I'm Zach Oda, I'm the marketing supervisor for Diamonds Like Toys. Um, so, uh, and I also am online as a DST Zach or as MS Word. Um, so uh, feel free to. Um, Come talk to me afterwards about uh, some random conversation that we had online. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of a slide presentation, but I'm going to take breaks because uh, we make a lot of stuff. Uh, we won't be covering mini mates and mini mates today. We uh, covered that in our mini mates and mates panel yesterday. Uh, so if you're a big mini mates and mates fan, uh, fan, I will take questions after the panel, or you can just ask them here, and I'll still answer them. Um, but uh, we'll be running down all of our action figures, statues, and uh, non mate properties uh, licenses here. At Let's get started. So our DC Gallery line is uh, about to get off and running. Um, we've solicited uh, about a half dozen so far, but as you saw from the case downstairs, possibly uh, we have a great many more um, on the books ready to go. Uh, these are a few of the ones we've solicited already. Uh, Suicide Squad, Harley Quinn, uh, The Batman Who Laughs, uh, Aquaman, Superman, <coughs> Catwoman, uh, Shazam, and uh, there are a few more here there that you can see we have not offered yet, including Green Arrow, uh, Harley Quinn by Joseph Michael Insner, uh, The Flash, and Supergirl. We'll also have some exclusive uh, figures at GameStop, including uh, The Joker and Green Lantern, as well as Nightwing, you may have seen the case downstairs. Uh, we've also brought a couple to the show, I don't even have photographs of them yet, but um, uh, Batgirl and uh, Robin uh, can be seen for the first time down at the booth as well, as well as Darkseid and we also unveiled our new PVCs based on the Aquaman, excuse the Aquaman, Ocean Master, and Black Manta. Black Manta will be a GameStop exclusive. The other two will be available through comic shops. Uh, you'll be able to pre-order those um, on our website now, but uh, everywhere starting next week. And uh, we'll be looking for those to release around December of this year. Uh, we recently released our first CW TV show gallery of Supergirl, but we will be continuing with Flash and Green Arrow. If you saw them in the case sensors, those are actually productions, early production samples. Uh, those were plastic, not resin, so um, that's what they're going to look like more or less when they're <coughs> those. Uh, a lot of detail. And these should be shipping, so these should be shipping in the next couple of months. Uh, the animated line continues. Uh, we have two more busts that we're going to be putting out uh, Unmasked Phantasm and Rachel Ghoul. And we have solicited our classic Harley Quinn as well as Harley's Holiday. Uh, they're both available for pre-order on our site, as well as uh, through the retailers. And the Batman Classic TV series line continues with uh, the 
the civilian uh, looks for the show. So you've got Bruce Wayne, Dick Grayson, and Alfred. And those are all, all up for pre-order now through your local comic shop. They aren't available on our website, but you can get them through other sites like uh, Entertainment Earth or the Bad Toy Store, as well as your local comic shop. Uh, unveiled for the show here are uh, our first figures from Star Trek Into Darkness. So you've got uh, Kirk and Spock. Uh, they'll come with a bunch of interchangeable hands, uh, weapons, communicators. Um, there'll be electronic, uh, there are blast effects that it can attach or detach from the uh, weapons. So we've got, there's a lot of uh, fun play features built into those figures. And uh, pre-orders are up on the website now and will be open everywhere next week. Uh, the Enterprise C uh, was another reveal for this show. It will be the next ship that we put out. The Reliant is still happening. Um, we're finalizing some stuff with that at the factory and uh, we hope to be able to show and uh, offer pre-orders for that in the near future. But uh, first up will be the Enterprise C. Um, so uh, look for that uh, definitely before the end of the year for pre-orders uh, with a 2019 release. Uh, you may have also seen a Borg figure downstairs. That one's a little newer. We are uh, still finalizing that, but it's going to have a lot of interchangeable parts, including interchangeable heads, uh, the eyepieces, the uh, tool arms, and uh, have a removable vest, uh, so you can see the electronics underneath as well. Pacific Rim. Uh, series 1 of the action figures is out now. Series 2 uh, should be shipping in the next few weeks. Uh, the uh, Kaiju should ship sometime after that. Uh, it's going to be a vinyl uh, with full articulation. Uh, about, uh, it's about 8 points. Um, you've got elbows, you've got wrists, uh, you've got uh, shoulders, um, and the hinged jaw as well. Series 3. Uh, we recently solicited for pre-orders, uh, but the figures you see in the case are actually uh, production samples, over production samples. So those should be an end of year release, but uh, you can pre-order those now uh, on our website and elsewhere. I threw the Hakuja in there again just for fun, but the Gypsy Avenger Vinyl Bank um, is about, uh, you see in the, base, in the case it's about 10 inches tall, hollow vinyl, uh, and has the coin slot on the back and the access door on the base. And that one's up for pre-order now for release later on this year. And this is our first line of deforms, uh, super deformed, chibi style uh, figurines uh, based on Pacific Rim. Uh, we're also going to be uh, investigating doing some other licenses in this format. Uh, we have a couple of figures from Nightmare Before Christmas down in the booth, um, but look for this to be a style that we're going to try with, uh, with a bunch of different things. And these will be in uh, blind boxes. Uh, we'll take a break right there. Does anybody have any questions about anything they've seen so far? Or any questions in general that are bugging them or that they'd like to ask the, uh, the team up here? Yes, sir. Fourth so question, and it's me recommending that you both be jumping in with the Enterprise team, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for the, um, the day on that Twitter, so I joined it with a little more, but how do you guys have sort of two years to make it, and it's the last year when I need to finish my entire Enterprise wall. I'm going to leave that the original, the A, the B, the C, the D, and the E. Once I get to C, we'll finish. I want to say thank you for that. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, as much a question as a, as a thank you. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I appreciate that. Day, so. <laughs> thank you. Yes, we uh, we have been hearing the fan request for that for many years, and uh, you know we wanted to diversify before. A lot of people are saying, uh, "I just need that to finish my collection." And we're like, "But but we have so much more ship love to give." So uh, you know, while we recognize that uh, people see that as sort of the Omega of the line, their of their collection. We hope that they'll stick with us for the Reliance and for other ships in the future that we have to develop. Oh, yeah. okay. Awesome, fantastic. That's good to know. Yay! Continuation of customer support. Any other questions? <coughs> yes, sir. The uh, white hat. I'm sorry, I missed that. Could you? No. The, the price point of the item is $45, so we we can't include the three Robins on it. We talked maybe at some point about doing a set with just the three Robins. You can buy separately and put together, but yeah. at the price point, you can't do really what we're doing already. So, But it's certainly possible for the future. We have other uh, members of that crossover, the uh, the Batman Knights. You may see down the booth, everybody, the um, the Drowned, uh, Batman from that, from that storyline, the Wonder Woman, and also the Red Death. Uh, the evil Flash Batman. Um, and uh, if those do well, then obviously we can continue that line and uh, maybe something else from that world's available down, down the road. Uh, next question. Yes, in front of me. I just want to say the catalog that you put out this year with the um, exclusive is absolutely stunning. So thank you for that. 
Oh, thank you. Another thing. <laughs> thank you. Yes, that's uh, the third in the series uh, after uh, Gem Edition Poison Ivy and Gem Edition Harley Quinn. So uh, we're glad you enjoyed it. We hope. Yeah, I, I didn't feel like Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn did quite well. Didn't suck. And I'm working with some really nice art pieces, and that was just really some really solid stuff. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that was by uh, Claiborne Moore. Um, uh, he's uh, he does a lot of art, direct, art direction for us, and he's. Um, very talented, uh, all sculpted by hand. Um, we, have, um, we have several uh, traditional sculptors on staff, including Eli, um, who uh, are not currently using the digital format, but I know that Eli's talked about exploring it. Um, so I, I look forward to seeing uh, his output in digital in the future, but uh, for now I'm enjoying his, uh, his hand sculpting. And Clay Moore is, is obviously a, uh, an amazing, amazing sculptor as well with a, with a big history of, of female figures. So, uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Like Klingons? <laughs> I meant to ask. I believe uh, I could be uh, not. I'm not sure, and I need to double check with um, Robert, who did a lot of the development. I should ask, actually ask Mark as well. I believe one of the heads is actually not human. Uh, it does have some forehead ridges. It's hard to tell down in the case. I apologize for that, but I believe one of the heads does have forehead ridges and nose ridges. And I, for half a second, I thought it might be. Uh, Bajoran, but I think it actually is a Klingon. Uh, it's hard to tell without the hair, but I believe you may want to double check that. It may actually be the second head may be an alien species. Uh, whether we do the other aliens down the road, that's certainly, if it does really well, maybe a re release with different species heads would be something we could do. But for now, we're just hoping that, uh, you know, that the people react strongly to it and the retailers support it and uh, we're able to keep doing cool stuff with Star Trek. So definitely support with pre orders. That's not a pre order yet. Um, but if you're interested in Ninja Darkness stuff, definitely pre-order that. And, uh, and when the board comes out, um, just let the retailers know that, uh, that you want to see more Star Trek. Because, uh, you know, we, Star Trek needs your support. Awesome. Uh, any more questions before we move on? Yes, sir. How many items do you have to sell for a line to be successful? It certainly varies from line to line. Which line? Yeah, which line? Well, well on average. Just give me an average. Like uh, action figure? Yeah, action 12,000. Like, uh, Everything's different. Resin's different. Uh, milestone resin is different. Uh, bust statues, gallery—they're all—they're all different. But action figure, you start to get around pushing about twelve thousand. Which line is your most successful? Um, well, long term, the mini mates—that seventy-five series. Yeah, that's been going for fifteen years, so I can't beat that. But profit, I don't know. Um, Select's been going on 15, 16 years too, right? Yeah, the first Select figures came out uh, 16 years ago, 2002, was when Marvel Select started. So those were not, not our first action figures, that was the Chaos figures, but uh, our first um, in that format, that larger packaging format. Um, and Mini Mates started that same year in a different format. Marvel Mini Mates started 15 years ago, 2003. Uh, so, so we're pretty proud of both of those records. But um, well, as far as right now, the lines are doing very well for us. Uh, Kingdom Hearts, you can find in a lot of different retail, just been supported by a lot of a lot of major chains, which we're very uh, happy with. So, uh, right now, uh, Kingdom Hearts is, is uh, probably in the most locations, I would say. So, if that if that answers your question, let's move on. We'll do a couple more slides, and uh, we'll take some more questions. If anybody comes up with anything, um, Kingdom Hearts, uh, right here, you can see Series Two just hit. Um, Comic shops, especially stores, a little bit before that, start hitting other retailers. Um, uh, exclusively at comic shops, you can see is the Aqua and uh, Birth by Sleep Goofy set. And that one's only available at comic shops, especially stores, as well as um, uh, most online toy retailers. Uh, Walgreens has a set of single packs, including their exclusive Timeless Sora. GameStop has two packs, as well as Best Buy, slightly different format and a Hot Topic has single packs. Uh, series 3 will be focused on space paranoids for the most part. There have been some changes since one of the images that were released. We've uh, attempted to uh, make sure the correct images have gotten out there, but the Mickey um, in this series, the Assassin, um, will be a hooded Mickey as opposed to the hood down, and it will come with a purple tinted translucent uh, heart suit. And, um, the Tron and Goofy set uh, comes with, instead of the Heartless, it comes with a soldier, um, and I believe the Space Paranoids colors. And then you have, of course, Sark and Donald and Space Paranoid Sora. 
So those will be the specialty configurations, the larger select packaging, and uh, there will be smaller, you know, two packs and single packs available at uh, the various retailers we mentioned before, um, including a few exclusives uh, that are coming up. Uh, Kyrie and um, I believe King Mickey are also on display in the case downstairs. Um, I think we're still finalizing exactly where those will be appearing, but uh, we'll keep everybody posted online. Our PPC diorama line uh, will start with GameStop, and we're going to have uh, exclusive PPCs of Sora and Goofy and Pete at GameStop. I believe Pete's an exclusive, and um, I think that whole line really. We also have one of Mickey and Donald, um, which was on display in the, in the booth downstairs for a little while. Uh, and these are the forty-five dollar price point. Uh, the PPC same as the DC galleries, and. Uh, and once they are ready, they will be going for pre-order on GameStop.com. So definitely keep an eye out for those, uh, so you can uh, pre-order them when they're ready. But they will also be at that at the retail stores. Uh, Ghostbusters continues. Uh, series seven recently shipped to stores uh, with the first art figure of Janos Poha, uh, and Series eight uh, will be shipping fairly soon with uh, We're Back Winston, We're Back Peter, and Slime Blower Ray. And uh, those figures, Series 6, 7, and 8, will be the first three waves you need to collect to build the Ghostbusters Firehouse. So um, there's 15 pieces in all, and uh, you also need to collect Series 9 and 10. Now, Series 9 and 10 will not be Ghostbusters 2. Series 9 and 10 will be based on the real Ghostbusters, uh, which you may see in the case downstairs. Uh, Winston, Egon, and Slime are in Series 9. Uh, you can pre order those now. Pre orders have not yet opened up for Ray, Peter, and the State of Marshmallow Man. Uh, they'll be in Series 10. Uh, but uh, look for that pre-order to open up in the next month or so. And that is a fully articulated Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, not like our vinyl banks that we've done, which are uh, just articulated the neck or less. This will be fully articulated arms and legs. Nightmare Before Christmas continues Series 5 uh, in the lower left there, from uh, Easter Bunny to uh, Vampire Jack. It's available now in comic shops, uh, but, uh, and also you saw some of them down in our booth downstairs for sale. Uh, series 6 will be coming soon, closer, uh, sometime around Halloween, uh, with Sally and uh, Mummy Boy with the Hanging Tree, <coughs> uh, Harlequin Demon, and the Devil with a section of the gift making table, which you can see down there by Series 5. And then the Clown with the Terraway Face will come with the Merle uh, with her, uh, her bathing tub. So that will be the select format, that larger, uh, larger package format that you see in comic shops, especially stores. Uh, our coffin dolls continue. We've got more deluxe coffin dolls coming. Jack with a podium and Sally with a croupon <coughs> spoon. Uh, these are our 14 to 16 inch figures. Um, recently released was were the uh, lock, shock, and barrel, as well as uh, Jack Skellington in his snowman outfit. Uh, shipping very soon, uh, I believe in the next month or so, you'll see our silver anniversary deluxe action figures. These are somewhere between the select figures and the coffin dolls. Uh, they do come in coffin shaped packaging, but they're about nine inches tall, uh, shorter obviously for Sally and the mayor, and they are fully articulated but cloth costume uh, action figures. Um, so look for those to be hitting stores the next month or so. They are available for pre-order. Uh, finally, we'll be continuing with the PVC diorama line with uh, Jack uh, entering Oogie Boogie's lair, stepping over the gunfighter. Uh, we also have Santa Claus on display down at the booth. These are the, um, 20, these are the uh, PVC dioramas, uh, $45 price point. Sorry, it's an incorrect tag there. Um, and uh, they come in the window box. And our resident bus line continues with Zero and Oogie Boogie. These are approximately a $60 retail. Uh, before I move on, any questions about what we've seen so far? King Hearts, Nightmare, Ghostbusters? No, no questions, okay. Moving on, John Wick. Uh, we've had a very strong reaction to John Wick here at the show, a lot of interest. Uh, the first PVC diorama is up for uh, pre-order now on our website, um, but we will be also making um, a second diorama that you can see in the booth from John Wick 1, uh, him charging through the door with his gun drawn, and uh, we're also making a select action figure, which was also on display with his dog. And we're also exploring uh, minions and minions for that as well. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, we're continuing uh, to uh, explore the video game world with this new license. Um, we're going to start off with some GameStop exclusive PVC dioramas of Sonic and Tails. And we'll also be doing some other uh, non-action non, uh, figure items, uh, mini-mates and mini 
Meats. Uh, Predator, we've got the classic cookie jar coming out, uh, sculpted by Eli. And Muppets, uh, we have um, re-offered our Swedish Chef Deluxe action figure. Uh, this will be at a slightly higher price point now. This is actually our first Deluxe Select figure. Uh, it's going to be about $29.99 instead of $24.99. That's $24.99. Um, uh, it comes with a lot of accessories. Uh, one of the reasons that we bumped it up to the Deluxe format. Uh, we're just offering him for now, not the rest of Series 3, uh, previously offered Series 3. But if he does well, then uh, we would love to offer more Muppets in the future. So if you have not pre-ordered, definitely do so now. Um, you can pre-order it through uh, Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Story, a local comic shop, or our website. Alien, we're doing a uh, letter opener, again sculpted by Eli here. And uh, it's got the removable tongue uh, with a letter opener attached. A uh, really fun item. Uh, and uh, this is up for pre-order now uh, on our website and uh, through those other retailers I mentioned. As well as your local comic shop. Uh, before I dive into Marvel, uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, not in the aisle there. I'll get to you next. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the cleanup. That's all right. We'll come back to you, sir, in the baseball. Going back to Nightmare. Yes. Would you ever do like a giant hanging tree? <coughs> Maybe not necessarily two scale, but like a big deluxe one. For in scale, well, bigger, like, uh, well, the one the one that's coming out for the select is pretty big compared to the seven inch action figures. Well, well it's, it's not scale because it's a tree, but it's right, right. Yeah, it's, like a, it's, like it's, it's like a 12 inch. Oh, yeah. It's close to about. Jason Bennett, it's pretty big. It's not a half full, it's just, yeah. yeah. In terms of something that would be like actually in scale, I don't know if we no. there's a second one. That no. thing's are ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, the little ones that hang from yeah. yeah. No, we wouldn't do anything bigger than what we're doing. It wouldn't be feasible. But you said it's really tough. It's, it's about 10 and a half inches tall, and it has like the little skeletons that hang from it. Right. Yeah. So. We haven't finalized that aspect of it for the prototype that we had on display, so uh, they, the skeletons are just sort of there. So they will be. Yes, yes, we have it downstairs in the case so you can get a sense of the height, uh, if not how the skeletons will actually hang, which we're still uh, we're still tweaking that on the product. Um, Serge, you remember your question on the aisle? Yeah. That would be a good one. Uh, I'm kind of surprised how much meme yeah. stuff plays into a lot nowadays, so I have no idea. Like the face plant card or whatever, I don't have any. Yeah, that could be our uh, card face plant. Yeah, that's it. That's a cool card. Well, you sculpt them, your team, so. I guess we could ask. Yeah. Depends on the sense of humor they have, right? Sure. <laughs> Disney's got a sense of humor, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So um, that's certainly a possibility. Uh, right now, we're just uh, looking forward to releasing the chef and hopefully, um, you know, getting to some of the other figures. Yes, we got to finish the band with uh, Teeth and Zoot. So, uh, you know, hopefully, sales uh, sell through on the chef is where we want it to be, so that we can move forward and do other deluxe Muppets, which I think Teeth and Zoot with their instruments would, would qualify for. So, uh, yes, sir. And the baseball hat on the aisle. What was the first part of the question? I'm sorry. You know, I think this microphone might actually be on. Would you or mind? You wouldn't mind using it, or just yell? It's fine. The chef said like different times, like accessories. Did he get more attention because of all the accessories that he had? It's not a longer to make situation. He was asking if it took longer to make. It was just that um, initial orders on the full assortment, you know, which is how we normally offer most of our action figure lines in the sort case assortment. Uh, we're not as strong as we thought, and uh, and the numbers we needed to make to meet the price point that we wanted was was not tenable with what we received in order. So, at a slightly higher price point on that single figure, we were able to to make it work with slightly lower order numbers, and that's what we're aiming for now. So, and Toys R Us closed. Hmm? And Toys R Us didn't cancel yes, the line, and then they closed. Yeah. Toys R Us closed. So um, we had to. So yeah, we've had the prototype done for a while since you know two toy fairs ago. Uh, so it's really just uh, it was really just trying to figure out a way to release it that would allow us to make less because um, because the Toys R Us is what makes a lot of is what made a lot of action figures possible. Um, uh, they supported a lot of our lines, so you know we 
I'm sure some, I'm surprised nobody's asked how tortoises' uh, absence has not affected, has affected us, but uh, it certainly has. It's made us think more about um, how to appeal to other retailers, um, you know, bigger retailers as well as smaller retailers. So it's certainly something that, that we think about a lot. Um, and action figures are you know, such a big part of what we have done. We want them to continue to be a big part of what we do. So figuring out a way to make them, make them work is, is a big challenge. Oh, yes, on the aisle in the baseball cap. Yes. You, yes. Well, you picked the first one. I know you started pulling people later on, but... Uh, For John Wick or anything? Or pretty much anything. Uh, usually the project manager handles that. So he ha we have a bunch of 2D guys that do that stuff. So the project manager will pick the pose and work with the designer. So like on Eli's stuff, he's a designer on it. So with Cthulhu, there's just a little back and forth. For the pose, the majority of stuff currently being made, it's probably me. Stuff like action figures, that's really just dictated by the articulation. We don't send you any 2D. It's just like whatever, whatever the design of the piece accommodates for is probably what it is. I just try to put in as much as possible. Yeah, and I take it all away. <laughs> ruin it. Yeah. No, that's probably me or the project manager that picks the designs. We try to have some sort of vary, variation to make sure that they, they, you know, they have to look different from each other. So the first one, he's walking. The second one, he's running. The third one. Is pretty cool uh, when we finally unveil that one. Very different. Um, still, John, still in a suit, still armed, but uh, it's uh, definitely that one's even pretty cool. I've seen the 2D on it anyway. I don't think I've seen the 3D yet. But uh, we have made some changes to the belt, so it's not ready yet. Okay. Yeah. So, but sometimes for a character, the the designer will throw you like a half dozen like thumbnails. So yeah. Like, yeah. Or something. So you know, you can, you'll the project manager will get like six or seven concepts from the from the illustrator from the designer. Um, we have a lot of great designers on staff and uh, uh, on, well, on, the, on the books. And they, uh, they'll give you like six or seven thumbnails and then whatever one project manager likes will rough out to a, to a final. Uh, any other questions? All right, we'll move on to Marvel. Um, you guys have seen these before. Uh, these are in the case. Um, what you may not know, you may not be able to tell between a prototype and a production, but in the case, these are actually all uh, early production samples. Uh, except for uh, Doctor Strange, actually, I misspoke. But the other four uh, that are in the case were actually uh, plastic. Um, uh, the, the quality is uh, still there uh, when you get to the plastic stage. So I hope you guys dig them when they come out. The one on the end of the Thor is one of my favorite pieces we've ever done, so I'm very much looking forward to getting a hold of that one. Uh, let's see, uh, other Infinity War pieces. We've got the Spider-Man Gallery. Again, these are the $45 PVC dioramas. Um, and uh, Unmasked Star-Lord, uh, Black Panther, Shuri, and uh, this is not one piece, but two pieces, uh, the Ant-Man <coughs> and the Wasp. So uh, you need to buy both of them to, to complete that uh, scene, but they do fit together to form a cool team-up pose. Uh, the Punisher in the case was also a production sample. I believe Deadpool uh, was as well, and Wolverine. So uh, those three are gonna be coming out in the next few months. Uh, Venom is a little farther off, that's still a prototype in the case. Uh, Carnage, I believe, was a production in the case, but uh, Black Cat and um, and Rogue and Dazzler are still a little ways off. Thanos will be a GameStop exclusive, uh, so keep an eye on GameStop.com to see when pre-orders open for that. Um, it should be opening fairly soon, I believe. Uh, and we just are now, this week and next week, are offering pre-orders on Squirrel Girl. Uh, and Cloak and Dagger opened up last month, so you can pre-order that right now. Uh, moving up to Resin, uh, our premiere collection. Uh, these are approximately $100, $150 price points in just in retail. Um, we've got a three-part uh, series of Deadpool, Cable, and Domino coming out. Uh, Deadpool and Cable are pretty close to shipping. Uh, so we've seen package samples of them, so within the next month or so, we should see them head to the stores. And uh, Domino is a little bit farther off but uh, she will complete that sort of trinity. The basics do connect together. Um, the machinery on the bottom, uh, interact, they interact with each other. And Daredevil, we're showing for the very first time. Uh, I believe you can pre-order him um, starting next week uh, through your local comic shop and other online retailers. 
Now here you can see uh, the 3D uh, sculpt of Iron Man uh, by Gentle Giant, right, Tana? Yes. And uh, Spider-Man and Black Panther. These are all uh, from your collection as well. And these are all available for pre-order now. Uh, Iron Man, no, Iron Man is actually still a little ways off. Um, I think we didn't offer it this month, so it'll be next month that we have a pre-order on that one. And uh, these are all up for pre-order now. Electra, Magneto, Gwenpool, and The Milestones line is a uh, slightly higher price point, 200 to 250. Uh, you can see uh, these two are not in the case downstairs, Black Panther and Iron Man, the Mark I Iron Man. Uh, but these are going to be uh, fairly tall. They're in the 18 to 24 inch range, uh, most of the pieces in the Milestone line. Uh, these two are probably around 18 to 20. Uh, Thor is around uh, that height as well, and then uh, Hulk is a full 24 inches. He's uh, the biggest one we've done so far. These are both up for pre-order as well, on our, on our site as well as elsewhere. Uh, we're showing for the very first time our uh, Infinity War Thor from the final scenes, and uh, you can already pre-order the uh, Hulk Buster, which is approximately 20 inches. Again, these are also these are also on our site, as well as other uh, other sites, Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, Marvel Select, we're going to continue with uh, uh, another X Men Beast, and we're also going to bring back the uh, Gladiator Hulk, which was a real uh, real successful figure for us. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people enjoyed the heck out of it. Said it was one of the best figures we've ever made. Uh, so we're going to go back and make some more. Um, Beast, uh, the one in the display case downstairs, is a production sample, so that's more or less what he's going to look like when he comes out. Uh, and you may have also seen the rogue that's there. Uh, I don't have any uh, pictures of her yet, but uh, she is um, in that 90s look and she'll continue uh, the diorama, the uh, Danger Room diorama series. So she'll come with an additional diorama, uh, Danger Room diorama piece. Uh, Marvel Select, uh, we're unveiling for the first time down at the booth. So if you got to see those, um, Iron Spider, uh, Captain America, which is Arm Shields, and Thor with. Uh, between Groot and Thor will be based on his final uh, look in the movie, so he'll have the cape and he'll have his new hammer. Uh, finally, uh, a new line that we're launching uh, called Legends in Three Dimensions. Um, we've already offered pre-orders on Deadpool and Venom, um, as well as uh, Pacific Rim's Gypsy Danger and Rorschach. This is a line of half-scale busts, uh, at least the humans, the humans in the line. And uh, they're going to be, the humans will be approximately 10 inches tall and they'll go up from there. You may have seen Robbie the Robot and Iron Giant down in the case. Um, we're going to be applying this to a lot of our licenses. And uh, you may have seen Eli's Cthulhu as well, which is really a, uh, an amazing piece. And this will be an ongoing line for us. Uh, we've taken over the Legends of the Three Dimensions brand. You may know them from some of their other busts they've done in the past. And uh, this is going to be a real showstopper line for us. So hopefully you guys uh, got to see that case with uh, Animal and uh, Jack Sparrow down in there, because uh, there's some really breathtaking pieces. These are going to be approximately $150, I guess, the retail price. And that is the end of my slide presentation. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, yes, sir, in the White House. Eli? personal favorite was the Walking Dead, uh, mainly because I was a fan of the comic and it was a real treat to, uh, you know, give form to Rick Michonne and uh, all the other human characters. I mean, the zombies were cool, but, uh, you know, those, there was almost like really just like, you know, background things. Uh, I'd say I also like doing the uh, Predator and uh, Alien lines. Uh, or at least trying to capture them as best as I can with whatever's available. Uh, the Cthulhu has been a real treat, but at the same time, it's like, you know, uh, it's a little tricky because, like, I was given some creative liberties, and, well, you always feel a little pressure, like, you know, well, make, it's like, you know, how do I know the public's gonna love it? And, uh, and how do I know they'll buy it? So, it's, uh, to be honest, I'm always happy to take on a job or whatever it's offered to me. <coughs> Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, it's probably Marvel Select because I'm a Marvel nerd. Um, but we're also, uh, I'm, I'm an articulation junkie. So 
the John Wick action figure actually has even more articulation than I snuck into past Marvel figures, so it's pretty excited for that too. Kind of falls for it too. Yeah. I uh, just say the Nightmare Before Christmas line, it's just a classic, and there's so many, uh, I don't know how further you're going with it, but it just seems like it's two more assortments, it's like endless. So they're hitting a lot of the obscure characters, and it's kind of fun to take an old movie that I love and now be able to do the figures for it, so. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the best part. You work on the stuff like that you want to work on. So I've worked on Batman, I've worked on Luke Skywalker, I've worked on Nightmare. Um, for new stuff, I like the John Wick. I'm really looking forward to that, so. I don't know, you kind of like what you're working on all the time, you know. I was never a big Muppet fan, but as a kid, you, of course, watch that show, you know, when on TV, so. I don't know. I've kind of worked on everything that, you know, that's been out there. So it's kind of Batman, Spider-Man, you know, Darth Vader. It's kind of cool. Uh, yes, sir, the structure of Blue Hat. I don't think gold, all gold is accurate for Iron Spider. Yeah, that's gold is an all the like, product. But, but that's absolutely wrong. But that was all based off of concept art. It's actually had got a lot more blue and red on it in the movie. Everyone just thinks it's gold because all the product that's out has the inaccurate based off of the concept art. Adam's right. That's why our stuff is so late because it's so like, we're done and they're like, hey, can you change this? And we're like, that's not what you sent us before. We'll change it if you let us know what it is. But those lives, they've been tweaking them up until the last minute. Yeah, I so. mean, you guys had the silhouette of Thor, too. We right. sculpted Thor without the, the chiclet armor on his arms and without the, the cape, and then it was like, no, that, yeah. everyone's going to want the hero version that's at the end of it. Because they weren't releasing that, because they didn't tell about they were doing Spo well. Spoiler warning. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I'm pretty sure our Iron Spider is the, the most, most accurate. accurate. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, the one in my shoe, please keep it, but it's really not that. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure based on the amount of rounds we want, that is yeah. exactly what you're going to get. Yeah. Oh, and uh, were you going to make a ghost that you might get or anything? We're not making a ghost. I can't answer that question. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, in uh, black t-shirt glasses. I guess it, it depends on which one. Eli sculpts, we call traditionally by hand, <coughs> out of uh, wax material. Um, Adam's team works entirely digital in a, in a program where they digitally sculpt it. And Jason's team does an output to actually output. So there's no like press a button and make a thing, even though they're all using machines heavily. You know, Eli does traditional casting with chemicals um, where you output it. And sometimes he paints the output material as is. So each guy here, does a different aspect of the job, and it's not press a button and go. It's there, even the output that Jay says there's a lot of back and forth. Like, how do we explode this? How do we get the undercuts in it? You know, a lot of times prints too, and the 3D prints have to actually be hand worked because when you're looking yeah. at something three dimensionally, you know, spinning around everything, you put all your cuts, keys, articulation, or whatever. But even when the physical prints in your hand, you just still have a tolerance sometimes where you have to go in and make sure it works properly. So. You can just blame crappy digital. Oh, he does. Oh, yeah. oh he does. It's usually yeah. very late at night. I'll yeah. get the, please resend this, this is garbage. Yeah, yeah. And Eli, in the same way, he works traditionally, but he's got to make it so we can <coughs> take it into different pieces and cast it. So even when this chemical is on a process involved, it's very, very handy. Even in Asia, there's no, like, press a button and a figure comes out. It's just, collectibles are very hand-oriented. And the beauty of 3D printing now is there's so many different kinds of materials that you can use, so you know, you can go from soft plastic to flexible stuff to clear. So, you know, it's 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 pretty intense on how to do it. You know, when you break it down, it's just not like you said, just clicking a button. It's a lot of work prior to getting you getting to that stage. So, what kind of three D printer do you use? A lot of them. Which one doesn't break? Oh, uh, they all break. <laughs> Which one is your favorite? <laughs> Who's that made by? Three D system. Shameless <laughs> plug. <laughs> That's just because my boss is in the back. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> yeah, they still did. That's not good. Yeah. Ten percent discount for plugging it. Not the discount material. Yes. Uh, Miss Amaya. <coughs> Uh, 
I'm not very clever. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't want to pin it on one person or one like license. That wouldn't be cool. But I can say the most challenging for me is the movie likeness stuff. That's the most challenging. Like the gentleman says the stuff changed up until the last minute. Like we didn't know if it was him, you know, I. So it's really challenging to make it look as much like the person you can in a really, really small item and get all the crazy detail that they put in now with these costumes and all that stuff. So overall challenging, movie likeness is for me the most challenging. Yeah. And that way it's, it's, it's the approval process in general. I mean, but movie likeness is particularly hard, especially because um, sometimes the, the actors don't really want it to look like what they actually look like. Like it's based off of scan data so a lot of the time. And it's like, my nose looks fat. Because you have a fat nose. Like that's a lot of references. A lot of references a lot of times has uh, if you're doing a female, she'll have makeup on. So when a sculptor is looking at a female actress, he's sculpting all shadows and stuff, but you just take all that off, it's you're not getting the true form of their face. So there's a lot of that too going back and forth and different things. So it's kind of deceiving. Uh, well, I did do the uh, uh, bus bank for Alien Covenant, and uh, even though that wasn't uh, the likeness of any actor, it was uh, <clears throat> uh, the likeness of uh, a character. And the tricky thing was it is because of the uh, well, because I wasn't sure if like you know they were doing it digitally or if they were doing it uh, practically. I was getting like all this. Uh, um, mixed references and I'm, so I kind of had to like go with the gut feeling with like you know what do they want what they they don't want and uh, so but luckily like you know Fox approved in the end and that helped but still it can be a very uh, well because we're living in a, a day and age where you know loose lips sink ships like you know well you get the idea it's just, it, you just gotta go with like, you know, your gut feeling and hope that uh, they approve. And the, the, the way to get around it, the, the trick that, that you were asking about, that it's Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> well, the end result on the bank was, was pretty great. I think it came out incredibly useful. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, sir, with the beard. Uh, on the sculptures that you work on, do you get to keep them? Or do you work like, uh, say you work on something and you use them and you say, I want a copy of it. Do they actually give you something, or do you have to go to the store like everyone else? D Dime is one of the best, as far as that goes. We occasionally send us boxes of stuff, so it's kind of cool. But most places, no we'll do that. <laughs> we have we have all the molds of everything we make, so if we wanted to cast one up for the shop, but we don't. You know, but if he came up with me, if he came up to me like, like uh, say like two years from now and said, hey, do you have? this mold for this Hulk, you know, we want to re-release it, we can just go into our storage and pull out the molds and hopefully they had not deteriorated, you know what I mean, and we can cast one up for them or whatever, so I think we guys did that with the, yeah. the Hulk. Yeah, with the different heads and stuff And like we, that. because we do everything digitally, it's just a matter of, we could reprint yeah. pretty much any project, anytime, and it's really cool because you can do things at different scales and, you know, utilize it for future projects. Uh, yes, in the structure. Uh, in regards to like the sculpting for the, uh, the faces, like in the Marvel movies, so do you actually have to get like final say on uh, how the face is actually looking? Because I know like Chris Evans is like, <coughs> like for some reason to get the light to like, 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 like It's a, there in many cases they're a step removed. Well, Mr. Evans says, you can see if that's maybe a, a statement of fact, but exaggeration of fact. There, all our stuff is seen by the producers of the movie. Um, the director is, in some cases, Kevin Feige sees our stuff, and the actor represents the most part see them. Whether they get them from their people or their people, you know, do it themselves, that's up to them. But talent approval is pretty much 100%. I mean, I don't know the last time we didn't have something that had to go to talent. I don't know if they see directly. I know Kevin sees stuff. I know Favre used to see stuff. Um, I know working with Kevin Smith that he wasn't seeing stuff directly. People were handling it and he would look at previews and he had no idea we were making it. Um, but that's, you know, that's semantics between them and their, their people, not us. But talent approval is a 100% pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, directors have a lot of say to it. <laughs>
I, you want to do it, that's how you do it. And they want the stuff to look, you know, if Kevin Feige is in your stuff, then it's a good thing, right? But, so you just deal with it nowadays, and that's why we true turned a lot from traditional to digital because it's easier for these guys to make a change. A lot of times when you do a figure, if you if you cast it, that original is damaged. So with digital, they can just it's expensive and time consuming, but they can make a small subtle change and have Jason or themselves print it again. If you're traditional and that head gets damaged in the cap process, you're looking at Photoshop because it ain't changing whether they like it or not. It's not switch it up again. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's the damaging the clay area. Yeah, the clay's even destroyed. Yeah. Like with the with the Kill Bill stuff. Two or three castings, those things are just garbage. So. But yeah, when they Evan says he didn't see it, that's you know, that's between him and his people. Or him and Marvel <laughs> and the studio, but not us. Because all our stuff gets right to Hemsworth and Evans and Johansson and all of them somehow, how that's handled, that's above our pay grade. But we certainly wait eagerly for their uh, approvals. Thank you very much. These are just talented guys we work with. Any other questions? <coughs> yes, sir. Like a ton. Of well, you mean action figures? <coughs> Statues. Uh, the first part, maybe you can like the first part was uh, mostly these. It's a pretty um, much a ton. If you haven't been down to the, if you haven't been down to the booth, try to get there before it closes. Uh, at five, but the uh, we've got a whole case and a half full of. Does he mean like Marvel Select, like action figures? I think he knows we don't make DC yeah, action figures. figures outside. We of had at least on. we have at least thirty pieces of DC on display at the booth. Yeah, he he ain't carried two of them to the show, yeah, so far more than we than we've offered for pre order. Before we show a toy fair. Yeah. yeah, more. Yeah, we had a lot of toy fair. We want to make a big splash there. I think we've doubled uh, what we're showing since then. Or maybe we can triple it. We doubled it at C2E. So we've tripled it's too much. Since then. And we're still. Uh, <laughs> We've got a bunch of them going to GameStop. We've got a few that we've um, offered to uh, comic shop retailers. We might have to start offering two, two a month instead of one a month. But uh, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of DC PVC galleries, definitely. Um, and uh, Vinny Mates, I really love Vinny Mates too. But um, we're not doing resin, except for uh, the animated and the TV. And we don't do anything posable for DC right now. Uh, we did the Washington Mini Mates. We did uh, Gotham figures and Mini Mates. Um, and we did a, an eye zombie uh, action figure, but um, posable is for the most part not something we're going to see right now. Our Gotham line is more or less over. That was a TV, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different deal than say DC Comics. I think DC Comics posable item is not something you'll see from us in the near future. So, just heads up on that. Any other questions? <coughs> yeah. uh, yes, sir, on the aisle. Probably not. We're very limited now to how many releases we can do a year. So back then it was easier to do like paint variants or head swaps, or but now we've got to really get a home run with the eight piece we're doing. Um, it was kind of fun to do like you know masses Deadpool and all back in the day, but now it's very restricted. So it's unlikely we would, we would hit something like that in the future. Uh, in the white hat, yes. Hey, is there, I, I have a is there ever a time where you would say? What was her, uh, can you repeat the question again? So the question would be like, uh, so like say you were working on actually the sculpt, say you were working on, have a work on anything, and uh, one day you were making a game that was better than the other, so they say you were like, making another action figure, did that happen? Uh, Something that they were working on for us, repurposed for another action figure? Yeah. I was thinking, uh, are we using the additional plug to do the two bows for three inches for an action figure, or post it? A lot of digital guys work from a buck body anyway. I mean, some of the stuff too, like we get, if we're working on a character like Ragnarok Thor, we, we, we might do the action figure, the statue, then yeah, or mini bust or something. You know, like, yeah, we can repurpose some parts, bits and pieces for sure. Uh, we got a call of a day here, but uh, I really appreciate you guys all coming out. And uh, I have a couple of things for um, some people who ask questions, really good questions. I'll open stuff up for the, for the people who ask a good one. So um, everybody stay in your seat for one second, uh, who asked a question, and I'll bring them around. Um, 
And uh, thank you guys for coming. I realize you had a lot of things you could do in the end of the day and uh, get here. So thank you very much. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Anthony Scott for Health to USA. Thanks for subscribing to our YouTube channel. And stay tuned for more coverage.